The Canadian government has sparked anger in British Columbia, Canada after giving a tentative approval to the Enbridge Northern Gateway oil pipeline. That pipeline will carry oil to Canada's west coast for shipping to Asia, but the project could be facing delays because opponents may take their case to Canada's highest court. Christian Yeo reports from British Columbia. Canada has more energy reserves than it knows what to do with, and while its biggest customer, America, may be rethinking its relationship with Canadian oil, Asia is growing thirstier by the day. But accessing the West Coast is proving difficult for exporters. To get oil to China and her neighbours, a proposed pipeline would carry it from Alberta to British Columbia and then shipped across the Pacific. This planned pipe is called the Northern Gateway. There, of course, is a big connection to BC with the development of the Alberta oil sands, namely Enbridge's proposed Northern Gateway pipeline. So BC will be a critical component of that. The British Columbian government does not share Alberta's pipe dream. It's busy forging its own energy export revolution with big plans to sell gas to Asia. Most British Columbians that we spoke to saw oil as dirtier and more risky to ship. I definitely don't want an oil pipeline running through the Rockies into BC and out to Kitimat. It's a, a deep water port, but it's a hazardous navigation. The economic benefits of a pipeline are impressive, $270 billion over 30 years, according to Enbridge. But it takes a visit to Canada's west coast to fully appreciate what's at stake environmentally. The Northern Gateway Pipeline is a hugely ambitious and complex project. It's divided and caused tensions between Alberta and British Columbia. And now the federal government of Canada has thrown its support behind the pipeline. There is, however, one sticking point. The native groups which lay claim to the land on which the Northern Gateway will run through. First Nations groups insist they'll not be dictated to. When the federal government approved the pipeline, their protests hit new levels of fury and defiance. They need to deal with those groups, those First Nations, who actually hold the rights, who actually hold the legal title to their territories. This is who they must deal with, and that's the approach that they, they must undertake. But it's not easy negotiating with this fragmented native community. There are almost 200 First Nations groups across British Columbia, and many of them demand a say. These groups have different opinions, they have different, different interests, and whereas some groups are fully supportive of particular projects, others aren't, and that all depends on their relationship with the companies, how they've been consulted. Most powers in Canada fall under the control of provincial politicians rather than the national government in Ottawa, except in certain areas like energy security and pipelines. But the Premier of British Columbia, a key supporter of gas projects and eco-friendly policies, is unlikely to accept the Northern Gateway without a fight. The federal government has said they're supportive of it and the First Nations have been adamantly opposed to that project. So there's a standoff there. I think an emerging standoff potentially between the federal and provincial government and both of those uh, place the, the gateway project in, in pretty significant jeopardy and it's, it's hard to know exactly where it's going to go but it is a very tough road ahead of it. Northern Gateway aims to connect Canada with emerging trade partners across the Pacific but divisions at home may pose a permanent blockage to this particular pipeline. Christian Yeo, CCTV, British Columbia.